A real estate investment group can save you thousands or it can be a huge drag on your returns. In this video, I'll show you how to start your own real estate investment club to get all the benefits without those costs. I'll show you how to structure two types of groups and pick the one best for your needs. Then I'll reveal three property investing strategies that will mean double digit returns for your portfolio. We're talking investing in real estate for beginners today on Let's Talk Money. Beat day. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's Talk Money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. So those of you in the community know I'm a big fan of real estate investing. It's where I got my start as a commercial property analyst. I've managed my own rental properties and truly believe that every investor, everyone should have real estate in their portfolio. But that's not to say that I haven't made some of those major mistakes that have cost me literally thousands of dollars. Like the time I bought a house at a sheriff's sale and then had to spend the better part of a year getting control of the property from squatters. Or all the times that I lost months of rent because I didn't do a full background check on tenants before letting them move in. Now mistakes by beginner real estate investors is nothing new. It's almost a rite of passage, but it doesn't have to be the case. In fact, starting a real estate investment group may just save you tens of thousands of dollars and boost your property returns. Now in this video, we'll talk about the two types of investment clubs you can use, how to structure it and how to find investors for your group. Then I'm going to reveal three real estate investing strategies that you need to use with your group to not only protect your portfolio, but also increase your returns in the meantime. So there's two ways that a real estate investment group can work. One formal where you put all your money together and invest as part of the group and another informal where you're just exchanging ideas, learning together, and then helping each other out when you can. We'll talk about both types here, including how to set up and structure your formal investment group so you don't run into some of those most common problems. Now do a search of local real estate investment clubs and you're going to get plenty of hits from private groups to, to those set up by the real estate investors associations. The problem with these franchise groups is that most charge up to $100 a month on membership. You know, basically they're just schools or course programs with little real group interaction. And if you do the math here, even a $50 monthly club fee becomes a 2.4% annual drag on a portfolio of $25,000. So look around your area for what's available, but I want you to consider starting your own club as well. Now I want to show you how to structure your group and then find property investors to join. But first I want to get your opinion on this. I want to do more real estate investing videos here on the channel and I want to know which property types do you want to see analyzed? So we've got commercial or residential real estate. Now I know residential rentals are hugely popular here on YouTube, but I love that commercial space like, like office, storage, and retail for those solid returns and less stress. And this is actually going to tie in with one of those strategies that I'll reveal towards the end of the video. So now which are you interested in seeing on the channel? Analysis on rentals or, or commercial property? Just scroll down and let me know in the comments and why you like that specific property type better. So structuring your real estate investment group, first you want to decide whether you'll have that formal investing group or the informal one where you're just exchanging information first. Now usually what I suggest is starting with that informal group until you get to know some of the members and, and maybe create a formal subgroup with a few of the serious investors that you find. Now that informal idea is basically just a once or twice monthly meeting where you have a learning piece, maybe a presentation by someone or, or you talk about a course everyone is taking. You can collect minimal dues to pay for speakers and group courses. Now the formal group on the other hand, uh, where you're pooling your money to invest in projects needs to be done through a limited liability corporation or an LLC. This is where you'll write up that corporate code, uh, choose a name and get an EIN or for the IRS. Now the business is going to be what's called a pass through. So all the profits and expenses are going to pass through to the individual members and you won't have to file corporate taxes. Now we'll talk later about who you want in your group, both the informal and the formal types of uh, real estate investment clubs. But it helps to have a real estate lawyer because you're going to have to have all these documents written up and, and then have them reviewed before you file. And so you need to spell out everyone's responsibilities, uh, their share in the profits and expenses, write out how the group is going to decide when to buy or sell a property and whether one person or a majority can force a sale. Uh, you want to set out how a fair price is determined for an investment, how the properties are going to be managed, uh, how voting rights and meetings are going to be conducted. You also need to talk about how much profits are going to be dispersed versus reinvested and finally when and under what terms the LLC is going to be dissolved. The point here is that you want to formally spell out the answer to every question before it comes up. You know, that way everyone knows exactly where they stand and how this thing is going to operate. 
You also need to set up a separate checking account for the business and use absolutely no personal accounts for the funds. Uh, only one person. The group treasurer should be responsible for handling all the payments, the investments, and disbursements, and only with a vote from the group. So yeah, this kind of a formal group where you're putting all your money together is a big decision, but it can also mean some huge leverage and some big profits. You'll not only be able to go after those bigger deals, but everyone is going to have a vested interest in driving the success of those investments. And it's not just limited to these real estate groups. Some of the most successful investment houses got their start as these small limited liability groups. For example, Warren Buffett and a small group of his family and friends in the 50s. Now, once you know how you want to structure your investment group, and again, I would say start out with that informal group where you're just exchanging ideas and then grow into the, the formal structure. And now you're ready to start looking for other investors to join. Understand you don't need a big group though. Even five to 10 active mem members is more than enough if you have the right roles in there. Uh, but maybe you start out with those 15 to people to account for people coming and going in your group. Building a group really isn't that tough either. It starts with yourself and maybe one or two others becoming champions for the project. Just three real estate investors reaching out through their collective networks of, of contractors, attorneys, and other investors can easily put together a group of 10 or, or more enthusiastic members. You will want a formal application process that gathers background information and experience on each candidate. Now, this needs to include a criminal background check and can be paid out of application fees or, or just the regular dues you collect. You might also ask candidates to prepare a 10-minute presentation on what skills or, or experience they can bring into the group. So it's up to you who you let in your group, but there are a few roles that are going to be extremely useful and you want to actively recruit these people. You want active investors as well as some people that are just interested in investing in real estate but would rather play a passive role where they just put up the money but, but maybe don't have a role or in management or in development of the properties. You want some contractors, so some people in those skilled trades or at least someone with property management experience. A real estate lawyer, again, this is probably one of the most important roles, but a real estate lawyer and an agent or two is also going to come in real handy. Now, if you're setting up a formal investment group, it's also going to be important to spell out these roles as well as how people are going to bill for their time. You can't expect a real estate lawyer to spend as much time in the project as maybe a carpenter and, and still get the same share of the profits. Spell out when you'll use each other's services in the project and how to determine a fair price for billing. Now, I know it can seem like a lot and it is to set up, but I guarantee you it's worth it. After a few tough years in real estate, I set up an informal group and it made all the difference in learning the ropes and, and really being successful with real estate. Now I want to share those three real estate investing strategies that you can try in your group or on your own. These three strategies are ones that a lot of investors don't know about or just neglect but can mean a big boost to your bottom line. First here is that I want you to consider commercial projects. I know it usually costs more to get into these commercial spaces like office, retail, or hotel properties, but these can be a great addition to residential portfolios or just by themselves. The return is similar and often higher. And let me tell you, the gray hair factor, that stress from running those commercial properties is about a tenth of what it is with rentals. For example, a common lease structure for commercial property is called triple net or triple in, where the tenant pays for all expenses, repairs, and even taxes. Now the property owner pays nothing, just sits back and waits for the check to come in each month. The second strategy, and this is one that I detailed in another video on seven ways to invest in real estate with no money down, this is called the lease option. Now one of the biggest headaches for rental property owners is that tenants just don't take care of your property. Seriously, I had to rent a large U-Haul truck each time a tenant left or was evicted. And we're not talking about the pickup trucks here. We're talking the 15 and the 17 foot trucks. I'd rent it out over the weekend, fill it up with all the trash and the stained carpet and the shit that they'd just leave behind, then unload it at the dump first thing Monday morning before getting to my day job. With these lease option strategies though, you solve this by giving the tenant a reason to take care of the house. So how this works is you rent the house out as a lease option or a contract sale. You and the tenant agree on a purchase price and an interest rate and they give you that down payment for it. Now the rest of the price is structured as a 15 or a 30 year loan financed by you and the tenant makes monthly payments. Most of these have a five year terms where the tenant has to refinance the remaining balance or, or pay off the loan over that time. Not only do you get a tenant that cares about the house like it's their own, but you also get a decent interest rate since you're acting as the bank yourself. Now, some of these houses are going to get paid off while others are going to come back to you. So you get to keep the down payment and any money collected on the rent. Now I'll link to that video, the seven property strategies that you can start with no money in the video description below. So check that out. Uh, that's going to have more details on this one and all those other, those six other investment strategies. 
Our next strategy to consider combining your direct ownership and property with some of these indirect investments through REITs and real estate crowdfunding. One of the most common problems that new real estate investors make is putting all of their money into the local market or into just one property type. This is hugely risky, not only for problems in that property type, but also for risks to the local economy. You wouldn't put all your money in shares of just one company, so why would you do it in real estate? Now I understand most investors just can't afford to have 15 or 20 real estate investments in those different property types or, or across the country, so the next best thing is getting that exposure through indirect investments like real estate investment trusts or those REITs and the real estate crowdfunding space. Now REITs are real estate companies set up to manage commercial property and pay out the majority of their profits as dividends. Real estate crowdfunding is similar but has a few advantages in the differences like, like that lower cost structure and transparency. Click on the video to the right to see those 7 ways to invest in real estate with no money down. 7 strategies that I've used to build a property portfolio on little or no money. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.